Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA physical science class and I am going to hopefully walk you through this problem that we were working on in class and ran out of time with today. Um, one of the essays that you'll need, be, need to be working on for your uh, physical science test tomorrow. So <laughs> this is the one that gave us so much trouble. Um, in class we balanced the chemical equations so that should not be an issue. But the thing that really did give us some troubles was how or what the question was asking here. It says, um, find the number of moles of oxygen that are needed to form six moles of um, iron two oxide. Show your work. So I think one of the confusing parts, it says the number of moles of oxygen that are needed to form six moles of this. And when they say number of moles of oxygen here, they're not referring to just single O, like the atom oxygen, but they're referring to O2, the diatomic molecule, the oxygen gas that's in the air that would be reacting with the iron. And that's something I think that it's implied within the question, but it's not um, very um, obvious if you're not real familiar with this. So the first thing it says is, you know, you have six moles of this iron oxide, iron two oxide. And we kind of went through a lot of little calculations in class before realizing that if you have six moles of iron two oxide, that means you're gonna have six O3s, which gives us 18, basically 18 oxygens, O's. Okay, and if you're to look at your periodic table, if you have one single oxygen molecule, or oxygen atom, excuse me, it has an atomic mass of 18. And if I wanted a mole of oxygen, then I would have 18 grams of oxygen. Okay, so by having 18 O's here, that would actually give me 18 moles of single O oxygen. But because we are looking at O2, we're actually saying that you have um, nine moles of O2 then, if that makes sense. Because again, remember, a mole of substance is equal to the, one mole of the substance is equal to the mass of whatever the atomic mass of that substance is, um, except for you use grams instead of atomic mass units. So. So that one we tried to make a little bit more complicated than it actually was. Okay, so this next question I have is not directly on your test. Um, the first one is was just such a difficult question that I wanted to make sure we went through it together. But the second question is similar to one that's on your test. Um, let's say you have 240 grams of sodium hydroxide and you want to make a 500 milliliter solution. And that says, what's the molarity of the solution? Remember that molarity is defined as um, number of grams per liter. Oh, ha, no, number of moles per liter in that um, of that particular substance. So molarity is equal to moles per liter. Okay. So the first thing we need to figure out is how many moles of sodium hydroxide do we have in 240 grams of sodium hydroxide? When you look at your periodic table, right here, periodic table, okay, you're going to find that sodium, you guys probably can't even read that, but sodium has an atomic mass of 23. And just round to the nearest whole number makes things a lot easier for this, okay? So if sodium has an atomic mass of 23, oxygen is 8. No, 16, excuse me. Oh, sorry, had a little moment there. And hydrogen is one. So then if you add these numbers together, you get 40. So one mole of sodium hydroxide would be 40 grams. Since I have 240 grams, how many moles is that? Well, 40 times six is 240, right? So this means I'm gonna have um, six moles 
of sodium hydroxide. So we have six moles. And we don't have a, a liter, we have half a liter. So we're going to divide this by 0.5 liters or by one half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by two. If you didn't know that, then you learned something new today. Otherwise, just use your calculator, which works just as good. And what you'll find when you do this is you've got a 12 molar solution. Yay, yay, yay. That's stuff's going to dissolve your hand, so be very careful, okay? That's going to be something that you're able to use in taxidermy. But that's the gist of how you do this kind of problem. So you're first going to figure out the molar mass of the, of the compound, and then you're going to figure out how many moles you have of that compound, and then you're going to divide it by the number of liters that you have. So just make sure you, you, um, you convert your liquid measure into liters and not milliliters. Okay. Okay. Okay, so also then on your essay questions, make sure that you know the difference between an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. Um, make sure you know that if energy is required, if you have to take more energy and add it to the reaction to get it to happen, then it's considered endothermic. And if there's more energy than is necessary for the reaction to go, so if there's leftover energy, it's exothermic. The other thing that you need to know is the difference between a, a um, saturated, a supersaturated, and an unsaturated solution. So make sure you know the differences between those or the among those three things. Um, those will also be on your essays for your unit for physical science test. All right, everybody. So hopefully that that helps a little bit. Um, review these things before you take your test. If you have any more questions or you want to work through any more examples together, just um, either give me a call at extension 2204, send me a webmail message. We can schedule a time to meet in my Blackboard classroom. Hope you guys are um, having a good day and good luck on your unit for tests.